Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and once again it is time for Ask a Herbert Erpaderp, the video series in which I, Herbert Erpaderp, provide wise, thoughtful and informative answers to your questions. Also dick jokes, because I am classy and hilarious. Or something. As you can probably see, the background video today is some World of Tanks. I felt like being a scumbag and so I had a couple of games in my BERT, the FV-304 Tier 6 British Artillery. As you'll see, I'm not especially good at this. I'm nowhere near the menace that other FV-304 drivers seem to be. I don't often play artillery, but it can be entertaining from time to time. I think that's gonna get me some hate. Artillery does tend to create tears, and it's for that reason that it's become a little less entertaining now that all chat has been removed from the game. Oh well, let's get to the questions. Sick Creations says, I love your videos, but politics do not belong here. Sorry for the dislike. And Mr. Elite Zealot replied with, That is your opinion, but he can do whatever he wants in his videos. Don't take this the wrong way. And that's true, if I want to talk about politics here, I will. It's my channel. You are of course free to not watch it if you don't like it. Someone made political comments and I responded. That's exactly what this series of videos is for. Me giving answers and sharing my opinions. I'm not an expert on anything, but my opinion is just as valid as everybody else's. And it's not as though I've dropped everything else I do and started making political videos only. Not to put words into your mouth, but I have to wonder if you really mean to say politics that I don't agree with don't belong here, because that's what it seems like when people tell entertainers. Not that I'm saying I'm some famous entertainer or something, but I think that's what it means when people get upset about their favourite entertainers posting political opinions on Twitter or whatever. I think people not talking about politics is actually part of the problem. I mean, actually talking, not just hurling insults. A large problem is people are just apathetic and that's why shitty things happen. I can see why they're that way though and I'm certainly guilty of it too. There's also the fact that people treat politics like sports teams. You go for your team because it's your team and the other team are the enemy, so as long as your team wins, it's okay. Doesn't matter what their policies, just as long as they win, and you by proxy win. It happens a lot in Australia, it's really stupid. So many things seem to be polarised like that, I don't like it. People and the world is not black and white and it's not made of binary options, though a lot of people act as though it is. Anyway, I'm definitely rambling. I don't intend to speak about politics very much, it's exhausting. And I don't much like politics or politicians, but at the moment Trump is a very big thing and it's not something that should just be ignored. You can't expect people to not have opinions about it and you don't get to tell me or anyone not to express them. Aries5342 says, You just lost a subscriber! Adam! I'm assuming this is because I have the audacity of disagreeing with you on Trump. Oh no, please stay. No wait, I mean the other one. I straight don't give a fuck, Adam. The Insane Sergeant says, Hi Herb, it's me, Ruddles. From episode 2 of Ask a Herb a Can I ask you a question? Would you ever consider building ships or making a 1700 scale navy? An entire navy? If I had an entire ocean, maybe. While I don't have space for an enormous collection of ships, I'm definitely interested in building some. I still haven't bought one though, but I will one day. Along the same lines, Level Up with Daruta DIY says, Herbert, are you going to assemble kits from World of Warships? I haven't actually seen any, but I would definitely consider one. I have got one World of Tanks tank kit and it looks pretty decent, so hopefully the ship kits are good too. I'll have to check them out and see what ships they have and compare the prices and such. X-Wing Pro says, And what about my challenge from the T-34-85 video? Well, you see, it's a less easily done challenge. It requires me to buy the Hobby Boss Panzer 1C, and if my local hobby shop doesn't have it, I would need to find it online at a good price. I was considering getting a Panzer 1 of some variant from Flyhawk models, but I guess that wouldn't quite be the same challenge, would it? Either way, I'm not just going to go and buy a kit immediately because somebody challenges me to it. I don't have that kind of money, even if it is only like $18. Top Bunk Productions says, What was your first miniature for bolt action? Do you still have it? Slash them. You know, I can't 100% remember for sure. I think it was the Metal and Resin Panzer IV from Warlord, which I do still have. It's not an especially good model and I'm not sure I will ever paint it, but I do still have it. I really should replace it with a plastic Panzer IV in 28mm scale. 
Bob Bob Bobbing Along says, I should have asked this a couple of months ago, but I hadn't thought of it then and I don't want to wait almost a year to ask because I might not remember. Why do Australians wait until summer to celebrate Christmas? Well, mostly it's because we just like to be different. It makes us feel like we're special. Also because we just don't have winter. Jacob says, Herbert, if you ever want to play with some fans on games like War Thunder, World of Tanks, etc., you should make a Discord. It's like a gaming Skype. That's actually not a bad idea. I'm not entirely familiar with Discord, but I have heard of it. I think you can also link it with Patreon, so maybe I could make a special patron chat too or something. I'll have a look at setting that up soon. T says, Hi Herbert, for your famous vice president I would suggest the Mighty Jingles. He likes tanks and is famous and popular in the United States. Rumours have it that he has a secret infatuation with KV-2s. The only AFV models I ever made with an interior were the 135th scale Hella VBCI, French APC thingy, and the Tamiya M2 Bradley. I can really recommend the Hella kit. Make Derptopia derp again, or something. First, Derptopia has never stopped derping. I think Jingles would be a good choice. I mean, he's no Cardassian, but he does have experience running the salt mines and so he knows how to keep people in line. I'm not sure if his own plans for global domination might make him a threat, but it might be worth it anyway. Especially if he brings his dog Boo. Wood Pet Boo. Actually, speaking of Jingles, if anybody doesn't know already and cares, you can get Jingles as a captain in Fractured Space if you play the game between the 14th and 21st of this month. I'm going to give the game another go for this reason. I guess anybody that's interested would already know this from Jingles himself, but it's still worth mentioning. On the Hobby Boss T3485 video from a couple of weeks ago, Top Bunk Productions says, What do you think of people using 148th scale models to play bolt action with? I think it's perfectly fine, as long as the opponents agree. Presumably both players would be using the same scale models, otherwise it would be a bit unfair. But if you prefer that scale, then why not use it? It might even work out to be cheaper to build a variety of tanks and armies in that scale. And if you've already got a good collection of 148th scale models, it's pretty much free to get into bolt action, minus the cost of the rulebook. The difference between 148th and 156th scale isn't that great, and you shouldn't need to alter the measurements for ranges much, if at all. Of course, people that insist everybody should play in that scale are a bit silly, but I have no issue with people playing their own games how they want to. On the most recent installation of my Derptopian City Skylines adventures, X-Wing Pro said, You sound really weird in most of this video. Also, I think you need the KV-2 Derp Defense Force. That could be a misspelling of weird or wired. I'm not sure, but I believe you meant weird. I think it might be because I had to do a fair bit of noise removal to the voice audio on this one, in addition to it being recorded a bit too quietly. Add to that the fact that I was tired and tend to mumble a little bit when I'm playing games like this and you get a less than perfect audio track. Also, I have been experimenting with the placement of my mic for gameplay videos lately. Hopefully I can figure out something that's comfortable, non-obtrusive and sounds good. Also, what makes you think I don't have a KV-2 derp defense force? It would be silly to keep them in the city. You want to keep the enemy as far from the city as you can. And so the defense force is further out to stop the perilous foes of Derptopia before they can get their filthy hands on our lovely city. Or something like that. Gustav 2 Adolf says, Ah, a sinister laugh to welcome new citizens. Good show, Herbert. Travel agencies across the world will be flooded with pamphlets from Derptopia 2. I'm going to visit the Stench this summer. You know, I would really enjoy seeing tourist pamphlets for all the lovely places around Derptopia. If anybody has some kind of art skills and is really bored, I would like to see that. If nobody's into that, well, the mental image is still amusing to me. Top Bunk Productions says, You know, I've recently thought about a possible backstory for Derptopia. It goes back over 110 years and involves crazy landowners, AC-1 Sentinel shenanigans, flag troubles, and the most exciting story of the lot, a squad of Derptopians in the eastern front of World War II with a big old KV-2 known as the First Derptopian Legion. I think I'll paint my in-progress 172nd scale KV-2 in the colours of the Legion. Interesting. I think it might also involve some time travelling. It's the 2020s in Derptopia, so 110 years ago puts it before World War I. 
I do like the idea of time-travelling Sentinels and KV-2s causing havoc though. The official colour of the Derptopian Legion is a nice shade of pink, or purple. Why not both? Yeah, both. On Friday, I uploaded a quick tips video in which I demonstrated how I airbrush primer. The following comments come from that video. Harry Davies says, Upcoming painting video I see. Maybe, maybe. I had a sudden inspiration for my tiger. Unfortunately, I realised I don't quite have the right shade for the base colour, so I'm going to have to order that. And that's about all I'm going to say for now. I think you might like it. Jackie says, I have an airbrush and never used it because I thought it was broken. Three years later, I watched your video and learned that I never took off the safety cap. I'm a little confused. Does yours have a cap that actually blocks the air and paint from coming out? The cap on mine that I removed doesn't block anything. You're really meant to leave it on because its function is to protect the needle from damage. Either way, I'm glad you have discovered that your airbrush is in fact not broken. Gustav 2 Adolf says, I don't have an airbrush but still find priming quite useful, even when it's done by hand. An acrylic matte black from Vallejo 169 works well as a hand brushed primer. Hmm, I'm pretty sure Vallejo 169, <laughs> 69, that's the sex number, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that colour is just a plain acrylic paint. I'm led to understand that primer is a different formulation that adheres to things better than regular acrylic and will be more hard wearing and damage resistant. But if it works, it works, doesn't it? There's nothing wrong with hand brushing primer. The airbrush really just speeds the process up and I suppose eliminates the risk of things like brush strokes. I would suggest specific primers over plain acrylic paints though. You can get Vallejo's primer in the small 17mm dropper bottles pretty cheap and it comes in a few colours. Robzalot says, In the UK, a non-airbrush solution is car bumper spray cans from Halfords. Works for me. Spray can primers are a good option, especially if they're cheaper than the aerosol can primers specifically for modelling. I've never used Halfords because I'm Australian and we don't have Halfords. Mentioning Halfords so much makes me want to listen to some Judas Priest. Living after midnight. Anyway, there's a lot of different aerosol primers you can use if airbrushing is not an option. Definitely do a little bit of research and testing before spraying your prized models with them though. And of course, make sure you spray those cans in a well-ventilated area. Probably wear a mask too. I've heard that stuff is nastier than airbrush primer. Smitty M14 says, I add some airbrush flow improver when I use my airbrush. Helps with clogging without taking away from getting the same effect. I use Vallejo's and it works good for me. That's a pretty good idea. I haven't used their flow improver, I should actually pick some up. But I do use their airbrush thinner, which is really good. I think it might actually have some flow improver in it, but I'm no paint surgeon so I don't know. I have added tiny amounts of that to primer when I feel it needs it, though it's usually fine without. My biggest problem isn't so much the brush itself clogging, but the occasional build up of paint on the tip which can cause some spattering. Easy enough to wipe off and not a super frequent issue. And I find that when applying base coats, I need to use the thinner a lot more than with the primer. Lee D. Chang says, If you have an airbrush, you might want to invest a little bit of money for a spray station. Or at least a cardboard box with a fan so the paint particles in the air don't end up in your respiratory system. This is a very good point. I do want a nice paint booth, but they seem expensive. And I'd probably need to get some sort of extension for its exhaust thing since I don't paint anywhere near a window. I do, however, have a fan on when I paint. It's why the box I spray into is cut down on the left side, so the fan will blow the air out of the side and not just right back at me. The fan blows from behind and to the side of me. Also, I wear a mask. Nothing fancy, just the cheap ones you get from the hardware. But I figure it's better than nothing. I probably should have really mentioned that in the video. Monday's video was about the Plastic Soldier Company 15mm Scale Pack 40 and Raupen Schlepper Kit. As always, link in the description and in the cards at the upper right. Jer says, love that kit. I picked up a few boxes when they came out to bulk up my Eastern Front forces. Have you seen the new 8RAD kit yet? It looks like it's going to be a great one to pick up with 5 variants in the box. I have. Well, I haven't seen them in person, but I've seen pictures and they look really good. Though I do think it was only 4 variants, but that's still pretty good. I'm certainly going to pick up a box of them at some point. I think the only problem will be in deciding which variant to use. 
Boreham says, What a nice kit. I really like the fact that it lets you build many variants of the Raupenschlepper, which simply means tracked tractor, by the way. I'm not a big fan of the solid windows though, but I guess it makes sense because it's a wargaming piece. I did know what Raupenschlepper means, even if I'm not actually saying it properly. I was curious what a Raupen was, so I looked it up. I'd heard the term schlep quite a lot. I found the idea of schlepping Raupens amusing, and even more so when I learned it meant caterpillar tracks. Or just caterpillar too, I believe. Why the Germans want to haul caterpillars to battle, I don't know. Some devious plan to ruin crops maybe? Who knows? I personally don't have a problem with the solid windows at such a small scale. You can paint them to look reasonable enough. Also, there's no interior, so I don't think clear windows would look so good. I think the main reason the windows are solid is just to make the moulding process easier. Ethan Ton says, Why tow the gun when you can take the Raupenschlepper and slap the Pack 40 on it? Honestly, I just love anything that's had a Pack 40 slapped on it. Why settle for the Schlepper with a Pack 40 slapped on it when you can take that and tow another gun? More shooting, less trouble. Lennart Hoek says, Silly Herpaderp, you built a Pack 38 gun with a Pack 40 gun shield. I do like how there are many gun options, but some instructions are clearly needed. Yeah, I realised that after putting the video up. Well, nobody ever said I wasn't a dipshit, and I think the Pack 40 gun shield looks cooler anyway. Let's just pretend it was a modification improvised in the field. I'm thinking I might actually send an email to the Plastic Soldier Company about their instructions. Not sure it will do much good, but I might as well try. Those instructions really were lacking. I mean, it's not as though the Pack 40 is an inconsequential extra like a piece of stowage. It's included right there in the name of the kit. Marjin Kebab says, Drinking game. Take a shot every time he says obviously. Obviously you're looking to get alcohol poisoning. Obviously. Gustav 2 Adolf says, Have you tried any of the Sturves in World of Tanks yet? I'd love to see some videos about them, just like what you did when you checked out the Czech tanks. I apologise if I'm not being pragmatic enough. What you did there? I saw it. I've been thinking about it, and I might do that at some point. Slowly though, with the Czech line it had started being a bit of a grind, and it would end up taking a really long time to get done. I was working on a video for the T25 I think, and lost all of the footage and a partial edit, which kind of killed my motivation for it. I've only played a couple of games in the very first Sturve, the one that looks kind of like a weird boot. It wasn't too bad actually, and I'll definitely be playing the other tanks. Even if I don't make another series like the Czech one, I will do videos on them. And that looks like all the time I have for this week. I need to get this recorded and edited before it starts storming. Mostly because I want to go outside and sit in the rain. If you have a question you would like me to answer in next week's Ask a Herpaderpader, feel free to leave it in the comments section below. Don't forget to do those YouTube-y things such as subscribing, liking and sharing the video, assuming you did like it. If you really like the things I do, please consider helping to support the channel over at Patreon. Patrons get to see my videos a bit early along with some patron-only bonus content. Link in the description and on screen now. As always, I shall return soon. So until then, happy whatever it is you're doing, and thanks for watching. Farewell.